Several months ago, I asked myself what seemed like a simple question at the time. Is it possible to recreate SimCity with JavaScript? In this video series, I intend to find out. In this latest update, I've implemented two new features, road access and abandoned buildings. Road access means that a zone must have a road nearby or it will not develop. If the zone already has developed into a building and loses road access, it will become abandoned. When a residential building becomes abandoned, any residents living there will become evicted. And when industrial or commercial building becomes abandoned, any citizens working there will lose their jobs. Before I was able to work on new features, I needed to address some of the issues with my code. If you've been following the series, you know that I've been using factory functions to define my objects. With the factory pattern, I pass in the initial state as arguments to the function, and the object is created and returned. I initially chose this pattern because it felt a bit cleaner since I didn't have to sprinkle this keywords all over the place. It worked great until I wanted to start implementing inheritance for my buildings and zones. I was starting to have a lot of duplicate code between the different zone and building types. I spent an hour or so refactoring the majority of my code to classes. I will say the code feels a lot cleaner after the change, so I think it was the right decision. The next thing I worked on was a minor visual tweak to the grass tiles. It was difficult to differentiate the grass tiles, so I added a thin border to the texture. This was a small change, but honestly, it made a huge difference in the usability of the game. Another usability improvement I made was adding a configuration file. This file acts as a single source of truth for constants in my game, like the minimum working age and the maximum distance a citizen will search for a job. Road access was the next project on my list. I wanted to replicate the behavior of the old SimCity games, so I decided to go with the following rule. If a zone or a building is within three tiles of a road tile, then it has road access. I was able to reuse the find tile function I wrote in my previous video. All I needed to do was to specify the search criteria. If the building type was a road, then I would return true, simple as that. Then the has road access property was set accordingly based on whether or not a road is found within the search radius. I needed to represent my undeveloped building somehow, so I found this cool model of a building under construction by Modadroid on opengameart.org. In hindsight, I should have used this model to represent actual building construction instead of representing the undeveloped state when there's no building at all. But for now, it works as a good placeholder, and it looks cool. In order to add the model to my scene, I needed to write some code to import 3D models. The 3JS docs have some example code for how to import GLTF models, which is the format my building was in. The import code is very simple. You asynchronously load the model from the public folder, and once it is finished loading, this callback function is triggered. There, I adjusted scaling and enabled shadows before adding the mesh to my scene. Now my undeveloped zones look like they're under construction, while developed zones are finished buildings. The next step was implementing abandoned buildings. Zoned buildings will be abandoned if their basic requirements are not met. As of now, the only criteria is that the building have road access. If the requirements are not met for a certain period of time, then the building has a chance of becoming abandoned. If a residential building is abandoned, those citizens are removed from the city. If a commercial or industrial building is abandoned, the citizens that were working there need to have their job status set to unemployed. I also wrote in some logic so if road access was restored to a building, it would have a chance to redevelop. Well, that's a wrap for this update. If you're interested in checking out the code, I've added a link to the GitHub repository in the description below. Please leave a comment below letting me know what feature you'd like to see me work on next. And of course, if you're enjoying this series, please hit the like and subscribe button so I know to keep making more videos in this series. As always, keep on chilling, coding, and creating, my friends. Until next time.